Kellen Moore was scoring too many points. Like, we need to slow the game down, give our defense a break. Who said that? Out. That's what Mike McCarthy That's why he's calling plays. <laughs> you didn't know he's – bro, he literally oh said – Oh, my gosh, bro. <laughs> he, said, he said he was like, Kellen Moore is in the, the – what exactly did he say? In the world of scoring points, I'm in the world of winning games or something like that. So, I don't know. How, man, how, how do you want to win a game? I didn't. I didn't know you could win games in in any sport. Period. Without scoring points, I thought you had to like put points on the board if you wanted to win the game. <laughs> Hockey, soccer, football, basketball, baseball, cricket, lacrosse, bowling. You gotta put points on the board, bro. Like, gosh, I can't. I can't. Bro. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we're doing football. This is so fun. <laughs> um. All right, I'm about to get in my bag real quick. Let's talk I'm about just, the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to just sit back, bro. You go ahead do your <laughs> thing. Bro. I'm just sit back and listen. Um, when you look at who they brought in, franchise tag 20 Don't Pollard. say they. Say we. Rep your team, Billy. Say what we brought in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, franchise tag Tony Pollard. Cooper Rush is coming back to be the backup. Jonathan Hankins, Tack McKinley. Terrence Steele, bring back Vander Esch and Dante Fowler. Two big offseason trades. Um, they traded a fifth and a sixth to go and get Brandon Cooks, who had um, a turbulent stint in Houston um, and seems like very excited to be in Dallas, which we were definitely in need of just another receiving threat. <laughs> um, they also go out and get Stephon Gilmore, who is definitely getting up there in age. But they were able to get him for a fifth round pick. Um, he had a, a solid year last year. And in terms of the draft, obviously we needed to address run defense, interior presence. So they go out in the first round, they get Mozzie Smith, who is a monster. They had to literally go and f- change a machine when he was at Michigan because he literally couldn't put any more weight on it and he had already mm-hmm. maxed the machine out. That's crazy. We lose Dolan Schultz, which definitely hurt me. I think he's one of the better tight ends in the league, but we go out and get Luke Schumacher in the draft. And then also everybody saw the Deuce Vaughn pick as well. We get Anthony Barr, uh, or we lose Anthony Barr, sorry, and lose Anthony Brown as well. But the biggest thing to me about this Cowboys team and why I feel the way I do going into this year, which is, in general, like a lot of y'all know Cowboys fans, it's like a, every year this, we're going to the Super Bowl, blah, 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 blah. I'm not one of those guys. From a very young age, I got very I, – I learned to cap my expectations for the Dallas Cowboys. I sat there and watched Tony Romo drop the, the hold on the field goal attempt and get tackled at the one-yard line and we <laughs> lost to Seattle. And I, I was just like, yeah, your season's over. <laughs> he dropped the snap. So ever since then, like what can I, I know what can go wrong will go wrong for the Dallas Cowboys. So I, I keep my expectations low. I like to say I'm probably the most realistic Cowboys fan there is. Never look at that. I all right. That. Sometimes it may sound like I'm not a fan, but I, again, I'm just trying to be I'm trying to be real with myself because I'm not I can't. Every year I cannot go in with this year as my year because my heart's been broken too many times, bro. Too many times. What gets to me about this team is I really don't have faith in Mike McCarthy as a play caller. That is scaring me Mm -hmm. very much. The last time he was a play caller, obviously, was in Green Bay. He kind of was holding Aaron Rodgers back (laughs) before he ended up being canned in Green Bay. They get rid of Kellen Moore. They bring in Brian Schottenheimer. But Mike McCarthy came out. He said that he's going to be calling the plays. I'm nervous. <laughs> I, I'm nervous. I would be. <laughs> I, was, I was vocal about having displeasure about play calling at times when Kellen Moore was the play caller. And a lot of that I felt like just had to do with inconsistencies with the run game. It felt like we would go way too long as stretches of games, which is getting too dependent on Dak and too dependent on being pass heavy out of the shotgun when it's like Zeke is on this big contract, especially last year when you have Zeke and Tony Pollard and they're both, especially Tony Pollard, like being as dynamic as a running back. And it's like we just abandoned the run game for like quarters at a time. 
Like, bro, this is the NFL. You come out and shotgun over and over and over and over, and it's so many passes. Teams are going to play that better, especially as you get later and later into games when, like, now you have to pass, but Dak's already thrown 35 passes. Like, right. That was my biggest complaint. Schematically, I think Kellen Moore is a great offensive mind. I think he's going to do wonders for Justin Herbert and the Los Angeles Chargers. I am very afraid mm-hmm. with Mike McCarthy. I have no no issues with the defense. This defense is about to be crazy, stacked, one of the best defensive units in the NFL. We were able to keep, keep Dan Quinn. I don't know how. I thought after last season. That was season, crazy. I thought certainly he was going to become a head coach. Yeah, that was crazy. I don't know how y'all kept him. <laughs> defense was playing out of his mind. He when came back. I don't know what type of deal Jerry Jones cut under the table. There's got to be something more there because if I like, there's no way Dan Quinn couldn't be a head coach again. Either way, he's back. I zero concern <laughs> with the defense, mm-hmm. none at all. No Every, Trayvon Diggs on a double move. You're not worried about that. You, you, no, you. <laughs> no, no, not. <laughs> Every single position is loaded, bro. Demarcus Lawrence on the edge. You got Mozzie Smith, Jonathan Hankins, also Odigi Zua on the inside. Michael Parsons on the other edge with Dante Fowler, too, and Tack McKinley. You still got Jabril Cox, Lane Vander Esch, holding it down into your linebacker. We keep Jordan Lewis to be our slot guy. Deron Bland still here, who played really well, kind of in the nickel as a corner as well. Obviously, now we have Diggs and Gilmore, two like very, very good corners who can play out, match up against best receivers. We now have two of them. Obviously, Stephon Gilmore is getting up there in age, but experience, like you can't really match what he's like. He's a Super Bowl winning cornerback and one of the best right. cornerbacks we've seen in the last you know decade or so. Mm-hmm. Malik Hooker, Donovan Wilson, Jaron Curse, all at the safety position. Like this defensive unit is stacked. Concern just goes back to the offense, bro. A, we don't have a bruising running back. I'm very concerned about short yardage situations. You have all small guys. Yeah, that's it. Nothing. It, it's like Tony Pollard is like is the best bruising running back we have. Deuce Vaughn is. Fine. Hey man, don't sleep. He was hoping. No, he looked good. He looked good. What are we doing if it's fourth and goal? Give it to Deuce Vaughn. They can't even find him. He's going to sneak under people's legs. He's not, he not even going to be able to see him. Uh, I think Brandon Cooks is definitely an upgrade. CD, Brandon Cooks, and Michael Gallup, that's a, a solid enough receiving room. I really am going to miss Dolan Schultz. I like Jake mm-hmm. Ferguson, though. I think Jake Ferguson is capable, but I think Dolan Schultz is just a tier above. All the guys we have right now at tight end. Side note, I heard he was doing good in camp. Like I heard like training camp knows he was playing, he was doing solid in Jake Ferguson. Yeah, no, he he had good stints last season. Um, so I think he he'll be you know solid in his role. We were able to get Zach Martin's contract situation done today, which is also very good. The offensive line, I still would say, is above average. Like Tyler Smith is very good. He's gonna be the left tackle whenever Tyron Smith retires. Still have Tyron Smith now, though. Tyler Biotis is a good center. Zach Martin, obviously, is one of the best guards, if not the best guard in the NFL, one of the best O-linemen, period. Terrence Steele also solid. Like, the whole offensive line, I think, is very good. I don't have the same issues with Dak to the extent that other people do. I was a Dak defender for many years. What I will say is, I can't defend what happened in that 49ers game. <laughs> that was inexcusable. You just can't, you cannot throw those interceptions there. And the interceptions were bad. They the one, were very on, bad. the one on the crow route, bro, I lost my mind watching it. It was like, <laughs> it was like a blind read. It was like, you looking this way, you turn back to the curl and, and just, just threw, it. threw it. The corner, oh, the corner done jumped the route before the ball came out. It's like he was throwing it to the corner. So that that's my concern. I don't think that Dak is a bad quarterback by any means. I think people are taking it way further than it needs to be. I know we talked about on last episode, people out here tracking training camp stats. 
I've seen people going crazy. To your your boy on Fox Sports, whatever his name is. I still don't remember his name. Brian. Come on, Carlton. Carlton, Carlton? whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. He out here did a whole segment, broke down training camp stats from Dak. It's like, That's bro. That's so weird. I'm telling you it's only because he's a Cowboys quarterback. Is he getting this level of scrutiny? And, like, you kind of just have right. to live with that when you have a star on your helmet. But. In reality, like I said, zero concern about the defense. This is a top three, top two. De- like on paper, it might be the best defensive unit in the NFL, but it's going to probably be a top three defensive unit in terms of output. My concern is with Mike McCarthy, who has not called plays in, I think, over a decade. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't want Mike McCarthy to begin with. I thought Jerry Jones just went out and got the biggest name because – He's Jerry Jones. This is the Dallas Cowboys. So maybe I'm a little biased there. I don't have the faith. I hope it goes well. I'm just, again, like I said, I cap my expectations. I'm not expecting – I'm expecting the offense to regress. I could see that. I could could, (laughs) – Which is – which I'm telling you now, come – if the offense gets worse and – where early playoff exit or scrapping to make the wild card, or whatever. I am going to be so livid because for so many years, it literally was like Tony Romo has the people around him, but our the, the defense, the secondary couldn't cover the bed if they were a blanket. <laughs> that even now, used to be horrible. I remember that. that it used to Jeff be Heath so was a star in safety for a long time, bro. And it's no disrespect to Jeff Heath. But, bro, if you wasn't coming up and hitting somebody, it was free. Everything was <laughs> free back there, bro. And it's like Tony Romo is trying his hardest in a shootout after shootout. And it's like now we have one of the best defensive units in the NFL. And Maybe we're the best get, defensive player in the NFL. Maybe. Right. And we're going to get held back by our, our play caller. I'm going to lose it, bro. I'm going to lose it. Listen, you got to have faith, bro. You got to have faith. Listen, the way I see it, I, I, I kind of do share some of the same um, worries as far as Mike McCarthy, just because he's not even the best with what he did now as a head coach as far as, like, clock management and just making decisions in general. So it's like if you add more onto his plate, right? like, that's only going to make that other stuff worse. So that and along with the fact that, like you said, y'all don't have – a bruising give me 25 carries running back like i love tony pollard i think he's gonna be great he might be fantasy biased as well i love tony pollard but the way you guys are talking like okay we're gonna run the ball run the ball run the ball this dude said that we like kellen moore was scoring too many points like we need to slow the game down give our defense a break who said that that's what mike mccarthy that's why he's calling plays you didn't know he's bro. He literally oh said, "Oh my gosh, bro!" He said, "He said he was like Kellen Moore is in the the what exactly did he say in the world of scoring points. I'm in the world of winning games or something like that. So I don't know. How, man, how, how do you want to win a game? I didn't. I didn't know you could win games in in any sport. Period. Without scoring points, I thought you had to like put points on the board if you wanted to win the game. <laughs> Hockey, soccer, football, basketball, baseball, cricket, lacrosse, bowling. You gotta put points on the board, bro. Like, gosh, I can't. I can't. Bro. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we're doing football. This is so fun. <laughs> I can't. Like, bro, what does that mean? What does that mean, bro? Basically, what he was saying was like, all right, um, like you guys scored. This is his words. I don't know. This is how he thinks. You guys are scoring too many points, too fast. Defense is not getting enough of a break. There's too much on Dak's plate. Like he's airing the ball out, throwing the ball all the way down the field. Blah blah blah. I can agree with that. Yeah, I think the way he, I, I know what he means. The way he's saying is like, let's score less so we can win more. Like I don't. The way he said it, I don't think that's what he really meant. But okay. the way the way you guys are talking, like, all right, we want to be a run first team. Like, you guys want to run the ball, maybe slow the game down a little bit. I think the pace of play is going to go way down without Kellen Moore. Um, yeah, like I said, I just don't think that fits with the offseason moves you guys made. It's like, all right, we're going to let go of Zeke. Obviously, you guys are paying him too much money. Cool. Yeah. But let's also get Brandon Cooks. It's like, all right, so now instead of having a bruiser running back, 
We added another receiving weapon, and now all of our running backs are fast, speedy guys, like not bruisers. It's like you would think that y'all are going in more of the direction of a pass first, like let's air it out type of team. Right. So I just think the offseason moves, which I like, don't get me wrong. Like I like love the Brandon Cooks edition. I think CD is a solidified one. Y'all really just needed like a solidified number two over there. Mm-hmm. Um, Sony Pollard, I like the fact that he's fully going to get the keys because I feel like Zeke was effective in certain – He's effective in his own way as far as being a goal line back every down, just kind of bruiser, getting those tough yards. But Tony Pollard was the one that had that burst. Um, yeah, like I said, it just doesn't fit with what you guys are saying in the offseason versus what you guys are actually doing as far as your move. So yeah. I'll be interested to see how it looks because offensively or as a the team as a whole is a Super Bowl caliber roster. Yeah. Like as a whole, it's like definitely a top tier contending team type of roster. It just comes down to Mike McCarthy and what the offense is going to look like. Because I am worried, like, if they are really going to have this run first mentality, are you going to give Tony Pollard 20 to 25 carries a game? I don't think that's the best way to even use him. I don't even like him doing that in general. I think he should be around, like, a maybe give him 15 carries and then get him out in space and give him some, like, five to seven catches a game. Yeah. Like, just not just ground and pound. So, yeah, it would make more sense if you guys actually signed Zeke back to like a like a lesser deal than how to, it would make a lot more sense. But like I said, it's it's just gonna be interesting to see what the offense is gonna look like. Cause I like you, I have no worries about the defense. The defense is gonna right. be elite. Like we're not even we don't even need to talk about that. But offensively, the play calling wise, it's gonna be really really interesting to see, and that's really gonna be deter- the 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 determining factor to whether they can win a championship or not. Yeah, cause look. As much as people want to harp on Zeke, a lot of it is, again, attached to when you look at how his play is in relation to his contract. Right. As a running back, though, like Zeke really made the transition from being who he was coming out of Ohio State to his last few years. He's really been like short yardage guy. And even you can see it in his run style, like he gets the ball, he picks a hole he's going to fall forward for like four or five yards. Mm -hmm. Um, And you need someone like that on your roster because in the red zone, that's the difference between seven points or three points. Mm -hmm. Like Super Bowl champions get seven points. People that bow out in the playoffs settle for three. So not to say that it's going to hinder the entirety of the offense, but like that's very critical to finishing drive strong. And even just like in any short yardage situation, there's not a great running option there. Um, on top of Zeke is probably one of the best pass protecting backs in the league and has been for a long time. And that is a deficiency in Tony Pollard's game. I, I've got to imagine it's got to be a deficiency in Deuce Vaughn's game. Just sorry, <laughs> just off of sheer size. Like, bro, if Fred Warner is coming up the middle. I'm taking Fred 10 times out of 10. No shade to Deuce Vaughn, but like, it just, bro is small like I, Malik Davis is also small as well like y'all have right. no like Rojo is y'all best like bruiser and he sucks like Rojo just flat out stinks and he's suspended for like the first two games that too so I, yeah look we can move off of the Cowboys um I am just I, I'm in a weird spot with this team I think last year was an opportunity for us that was missed and I think we'll look back on that in a couple of seasons and be like, dang, because this defense cannot stay this good for this long. Money is going to have to get dished out. Dan Quinn is eventually going to dip. I, he can't stay here forever. So it's really in my head like this now or never. It's got to happen now because I can't imagine Dan Quinn being here another year. And like I said, money's going to have to get dished out. So Roster's not going to get much better than this. Right.